What's going on everyone, my name's Tenebris, and today we're going to talk about how to utilize the new skill respec system to the absolute maximum, using a build I'm calling a fluid build here in Generation Zero. The main idea behind this is that with our new respec system, sure, you can use it to knuckle out what you consider to be the perfect build for your character, maybe get rid of some of those skills that you regret picking up or maybe mess around with a few skills that you haven't tried before going back to your usual build. But the better way to use this system is to use the respec when you need to in order to loot and shoot to the fullest of your capabilities. The concept of this is simple. You'll have a combat build that you could tweak as you go, and then you'll have a looting build that you'll switch over to when your ammunition starts to run out. Or when you need to go on a general farming session for medkits or adrenaline to get the most out of the excess ammunition you'll inevitably pick up along the way. The nice thing about having two focus builds is how it genuinely improves game flow. There are a lot of RPG elements in Generation Zero, from damage skills to defense, health, and stamina, but then there's the whole looting side, and then a kind of more miscellaneous side to our skills, and being spread out too thin actually impedes your character more than you would expect. But now, with our fluid builds, we can have a build strictly dedicated to combat skills, and the ones that benefit combat, and then a salvaging farming build to restock quickly and efficiently. And once you start to build up enough uranium from leveling up in base defense and uh, base assaults and stuff, you can start to do this on the fly, farming after you're done fighting and then switching back to your combat build. Though, that's kind of just flexing uranium stockpiles at that point. So next up, I'm going to show you a couple builds I use for my combat and farming and show you how simple of a procedure it is to switch back and forth between your builds, flexing my uranium stockpiles in the process. Alright, so first off, setting up our combat build, and I like to start from left to right when I build my combat build. And so what I do is I pump one point into all of the combat skills that I'm going to be picking up here. Up until Weapon Sway. And then I go for all of these guys up until Steady Feet, and then Spotting Intel up until Component Damage. Then I go through all of the combat skills again, except for Run and Gun. It's the one perk that I leave out, and I'll show you why in a second here. So, I pick up Reload Speed, one into Armor, one into Armor Damage, one into Trigger Happy, one into Weapon Sway, Recoil, and then Hip Shot Accuracy. And then, with those last four points, I can put one point into Component Damage, one point into Health Amount, one point into Running Speed, and then max out carrying capacity. Now, again, these skill builds should be kind of fluid, so you maybe will want to swap things around and occasionally go for make them count and have a little bit more of a conservative approach and try to use semi-auto with some of the full auto weapons. Uh, but I find that in general, the trigger happy vanguard is pretty much kind of the top of the meta for what you can have in terms of a combat build here in the game, uh, and then maximizing our component damage, uh, utilizing steady feet so that we don't get knocked down as often. Uh, you don't need to max out health amount, but once you have two points into that, two points into armor, and then the vanguard specialization on top of it, you're pretty dang tanky. And then the moment that combat wraps up and you're going around to loot the machines, you're going to want to reset your skill points. Then, you're going to want to put your points into the movement skills, so that that way you can move around and loot very freely and easily. Then you're going to take Chemist, Max Out Salvage, Max Out Mechanic, pick up Explosives Expert, and then pick up the Engineer Specialization. Once you've swapped over to this Engineer build after combat, you can pick up Tick Pods, from military, tanks, harvesters, and hunters uh, going all the way up to Apocalypse class and then utilize those ticks in the middle of combat a little bit more, expanding on your gameplay a bit. 
It's gonna wind up being really nice having tech pods once we get our equipment pack on the same day this Thursday with the new dawn update. And the returns you get with the salvage perk after spending minimal amounts of bullets with your optimized combat build is a heck of a return. But this fluid build goes so much further. You can have multiple builds that you play and switch between. Say, a stealthy damage-based build f focused around the marked target, or utilizing a hacking build when you're going through a phoenix base in order to take out a whole bunch of the uh, shield generators, and then swapping over to a combat build to finish off the whole base. There are a lot of opportunities and potentials here with this fluid build system. This is the sort of thing that you have to kind of relearn and sometimes remind yourself to do. But in the end, having a fluid approach to your builds will benefit your gameplay tenfold, allowing you to experience more of Generation Zero's skills on a single character. This maybe isn't as perfect as a skill increase itself, but it's still the most liberating thing that we've seen in regards to Generation Zero's skill system since launch, and I hope it's a feature you dudes will want to engage with regularly here through these fluid builds. So cheers my dudes, thank you for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.